I wanted to give a brief overview of how to um, set up Shopware PWA, how to set up your instance, um, how to install the corresponding plugin that's necessary for the PWA, um, and also how to connect the PWA with your Shopware backend. So um, we're going to start by setting up the um, Shopware instance using the production template. And then we're going to go into the PWA configuration, um, connect both dots. Um, and of course, we're also going to install the plugin um, because there's been some confusion about how to set that up and uh, what kind of version constraints there are around the different components. Um, so yeah, let's just uh, dive right into it. So we're going to start by setting up the Shopware instance, okay? So I'm going to head to the Shopware production template. Um, you can also set Shopware, uh, set up Shopware using the um, Shopware slash development template. Um, for example, if you want to use the current master and want to have some additional features, um, you might rather want to um, use the master, um, at least for now, instead of uh, relying on the production template. But certainly if you're working on a, on a stable release version, you want to go with a production template. So that's what, what we're going to do for now. Um, so in order to install it, we have to clone it first. Um, so I'm going to copy um, the, the string from this, this clone or download button right here and then open a shell. And inside this shell, I'm going to say git uh, clone and then specify um, the, the reference to the GitHub repository and then specify the name of your folder um, that you want to uh, expand it into. So I'm just going to go with shopware production um, and then uh, make sure that that's the, um, the place that you want the shopware uh, instance to be in. So that's cloning um, all of the repository into the shopware production directory. So I'm going to head in there and then say composer install. It's actually the same. Um, if you if you look at the setup and install instructions, it's essentially the same things that we're going to do. So that's installing all my dependencies for now. Next thing we want to do is um, configure the Shopware instance so it knows where the database is and um, which which uh, host it has and so on. So we're going to say bin console system setup okay so bin console system colon setup and then we have to uh, basically configure our, our environment so i want to go with the dev uh, environment for now so we get some some debug information um, then going for sw-6 production and make sure you set that uh, to wherever your server serves the application. Um, so for me, that's um, pre-configured um, as, a, as a virtual host. And then configure your database. I'm going to go for Shopware production as a database name too. <coughs> and then uh, write that into our um, .env file. Okay, so uh, once the .env file is written, we can go into building the system. So we're just gonna run that system install command. And that's going to run the migrations and set up the database, uh, let some indexes run. And then it's also going to um, create a first sales channel. So that's something that we'll need for later. Um, but we can get it for some, uh, somewhere else as well. So now we've set up Shopware. Um, we can actually double check that by heading to, um, to the URL that we've, we've uh, specified before and check whether we actually get a response. Okay, so as we see, our shop is up and running, but has no products whatsoever. And what you see right there, that's the default storefront, right? That's not the PWA. 
Um, so um, we're going to go into the admin, which is just the URL of your shop slash admin. Login as admin slash shopware. And now I'm just going to um, go into this, uh, this wizard real quick because I would like to um, install demo data. Okay, and the rest is not really uh, relevant for us right now. We're just going to skip through those. And actually, I'm just noticing we are currently on 6.1.1 stable version. So let's go ahead and just make a quick update so we are on the current stable version. So go back to the production template. Um, and then we're just going to pull the recent changes. We could also say git pull origin, but w when you're using a fork or something, which you should be doing for uh, custom projects, uh, you want to keep the uh, origin or uh, keep a remote towards um, the shopware GitHub master. Okay, and we should be checking out because we haven't followed all the instructions. We should be checking out the 6.1 branch, of course. So let's do that. Git check out 6.1 and then pull again. And now we can say composer install again. Composer install. So that's going to run the um, the remaining migrations and update dependencies. If we had actually ran this command up front, we wouldn't have to do this now. So please forgive me for that. Uh, you see there's been uh, six migrations that we had to run and now everything's um, updated so we can go back into the dashboard, refresh it and we should be able should be able to see uh, that we are on 614 right now. And now if we update the storefront, we can actually see that we have some demo data in here, um, something that makes it a bit more uh, a bit more colorful and gives it some life. So now um, let's go ahead and install the PWA plugin. So to do that, um, we can head to the um, GitHub repository. And now there's different ways that you can actually install the, the extension. The first way that you can go about it is by uh, cloning the repository into your custom plugins directory and that applies to both using the production or the development template, right? So you can uh, use the way that's, that's described here for both uh, repositories. Um, however, what you can also do is uh, use Composer to actually require this plugin as a dependency, which is a, is a, a more maintainable way to do it uh, because you have things like version constraints built in and everything. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do this for now. Now there's one more thing which is worth mentioning. Um, if you look at this little notice, uh, which counts for, for now and up to the release of Shopware 6.2, um, it says uh, the plugin is only compatible with Shopware platform at master since some required editions have not yet been released. Um, and that is true. Um, there are some editions that um, are currently just on the master. They will be released with Shopware 6.2 but are not for now. Um, so since that is the case, um, we have to work around this if you're using the production template um, and a stable version uh, because there's no stable versions of, uh, of 6.2 right now so you're probably using a 6.1 version as we are for now, right? Because we are using uh, 6.14. So what we have to do is um, install a little workaround and because that's a bit more complex I want to show the complex case um, to not make it a problem for anyone. Um, there is a branch called shopware-6-1-compatibility. So make sure you use that branch um, to check out. So you can either say um, 
when you when you clone the plugin say git clone uh, and then specify the branch and then make sure to specify shopware 61 compatibility but I want to do it through composer so I'm gonna say composer require inside the root of my production um, template shopware dash pwa slash shopware dash pwa that's the name of the composer package associated with the plugin and then we can specify the branch name by saying def dash and then the name of the branch so let's copy the name of the branch and go ahead and require it you might have to set your minimum stability uh, to def before you do that um, um, and I'm gonna show you how to do it afterwards So that's going to um, download the plugin dependencies uh, and install the plugin as well. I'll actually not install it, um, but run some, some actions necessary to um, provide the plugin. Okay, so um, if that command was failing for you, um, that is most likely due to the, the minimum stability which I mentioned. So you have to say composer config minimum stability and then set that to dev because by default it is stable. So make sure you set that to dev and that should do the job. Um, so now the plugin has been downloaded and we can double check that by saying bin console plugin colon refresh so um, that's giving us a, an overview of the plugins which are currently installed so it shows us that the plugin version shopware 61 compatibility is installed right here uh, not installed but downloaded so now we have to install it and we can do that by saying bin slash console plugin install specify the name and then we can add this little flag activate which activates it right away so that's it for activating the plugin so now we can um, double check whether the plugin is active um, if we go to the admin panel and go to settings system and plugins oh and then it should be showing up right here. So now we need to um, make the PWA aware of, um, of our uh, Shopware instance. In order to do that, um, we're going to go into one of our sales channels, copy the access key, and then we have to switch into another shell, which, uh, or you can also switch into the directory of your PWA. So Inside here, I already uh, have a, um, a copy of the uh, Shopware PWA GitHub repository. So um, I am going to say, um, actually, the only thing I have to do is um, edit that uh, Shopware PWA config. So um, open it in, in any, any uh, text editor you want. And then this would have um, this would have um, these module exports right here, where you can specify your um, shopware instance. So I'm just going to uh, leave that as is because that's the correct endpoint, and, and then I'm going to update the shopware access token with the one that we've just copied, and then save that, and that's it. Um, if it's your first time setting up the PWA, you would have to say shopware dash PWA uh, shopware dash PWA in it, and then it walks you through the different steps in order to set everything up, right? But we don't have to do that for now. So um, what we can do instead is just say shopware PWA dev. Now that's going to start uh, the, the application in, in dev mode um, under some, uh, some local host. 
So now we have this beautiful loading screen from Nuxt. And um, once that is done loading and serving the application, we can actually get confirmation whether our setup was correct. Okay, and as you can see, um, that's the, uh, the PWA storefront. So we are, uh, up here we have the, the different categories that we can browse, th browse through. Um, so it might need some time to warm up. Um, there we go. Um, so we can browse through the different categories right here. It shows us the products. Um, and um, if we go to the start page, we see actually that the, um, the CMS pages are working as well because that's a CMS page right here. Um, and uh, you, can, you can start using the PWA, start um, uh, tweaking some of the things you want. And um, if you have any questions, uh, any feedback, um, please go into our um, Slack channel, which you find um, right here. So it's the hashtag shopware PWA channel on the um, view storefront set Slack channel. Um, you can di directly contact me or any other of the core contributors for the um, shopware PWA. And um, yeah, I hope this was uh, an insightful kind of um, introduction on how to set up everything. Um, I hope it works out for you. And if not, um, always uh, shoot at us with any questions that you might have and um, yeah thanks for watching